But all that work, which is all very important, does not add up to a coherent new account of Reconstruction. It's local or it's international, but nobody has produced a new narrative history of Reconstruction that they've added new dimensions, but not a coherent uh, new view of the period. I think it's fair to say that for that, if they just want to find out what the most, the most, it's a sad commentary in a way, the most recent actual narrative account of Reconstruction is my own book from 25 years ago. Because all this other work doesn't add, has not yet produced a new story of what happened in Reconstruction in all of these areas. So I think readers still have to return to that book, which is good for me. Um, <laughs> It's on the reading list, a short version. If you love footnotes or are a glutton for punishment, you can read the long version. The short version is for people who don't have as much of an attention span. Um, I'm not going to summarize exactly what's in that book, which you will soon see, but I, would, I, I do want to, since um, this has occupied my life for a long time, because after I write, wrote that book, I then was involved in a PBS TV series about Reconstruction. I curated an exhibit about Reconstruction. I run a summer seminar every summer for high school teachers from around the country about how to teach Reconstruction. It's sort of been part of my life for a long time. So I just want to end up today by just telling you a little story, which is how I first got involved in this, as far as I can remember, which was in my ninth grade American history class at Long Beach High School out in Long Island. And our teacher, who I remember very well, was Mrs. Bertha Berryman, known affectionately among the, us, the students, as Big Bertha, <laughs> after a piece of artillery from World War I, <laughs> which she somewhat resembled. <laughs> and um, our uh, text was a very famous American history textbook of the 50s, another Columbia historian, David Muzzy's textbook. And um, echoing, Muzzy gave the traditional view of Reconstruction, and Mrs. Berryman, echoing that, said in class that the Reconstruction Act of 1867, which gave the right to vote for the first time for, to black men in the South, was the worst law in all of American history. I, for some reason, raised my hand and said, I don't agree with you, Mrs. Berryman. I think the Alien and Sedition Acts were worse. <laughs> Mrs. Berryman said, all right, uh, if you don't like the way I'm teaching, Eric, you come in tomorrow and you can give a lecture on Reconstruction. Um, which I then proceeded to do, although <laughs> with the help of my father, who was a historian, I have to admit, and my presentation, owed a lot more to W.E.B. Du Bois than to uh, Muzzy. Now, at the end of the class, Mrs. Berryman, who was a genuine um, Democrat, small d, said, all right, class, you've heard me and you've heard Eric. Now we're going to take a vote as to who is correct, OK? So I wish I could uh, say that I carried the day, but in fact, only one student voted for me, my best friend, Neil Kleinman. <laughs> other, than, other than that, everybody voted for Mrs. Berry. So probably in some subliminal way or psychological way, I was planning to get back at her. <laughs> and uh, I hope that wherever she is, or probably down there, she's, uh, she has the time to, she has the time to read this book. <laughs> now, um, one of the areas, one of the areas, one of the reasons that Reconstruction remains misunderstood is the persistence of the Dunning interpretation in public history, in monuments, in historical markers, in museums. Um, and little by little by little, this is changing. I've tried my best to get it changed. I have been agitating for well, since the year 2000, so that's getting on a ways, with the National Park Service to have to set up a national park site, historical site related to Reconstruction. There are 600 National Park historical sites. Not a single one of them deals with Reconstruction except the Andrew Johnson Homestead in Greenville, Tennessee, which charitably 
can be called out of date, let's just put it that way, in their view of Andrew Johnson. Nothing has happened. Uh, I tr I, I've discussed it with various heads of the National Park Service, but it's, too, it's still too controversial. That's the astonishing thing. Uh, slavery is controversial, but people are now talking about slavery. Reconstruction still, uh, it's very hard to overcome that old, uh, that old point of view. Little progresses are made. A guy sent me a thing just uh, recently from Hamburg. This is from the uh, Aiken, South Carolina Standard, the unveiling of a new marker in Hamburg, South Carolina. Hamburg, we'll get to this, was the site of the Hamburg, so-called Hamburg Massacre of 1976, uh, sorry, 1876, which was part of the ending of Reconstruction in um, South Carolina. And they, they, it was a mass, it was an altercation, we'll talk about it, where something like six one white farmer and six black men were killed in this fight. And later, the state put up a monument to the one white person killed without mentioning that six black people had also been killed, which is why they called it the Hamburg Massacre. So now, uh, well over a century, century and a half later, a new marker was put up to commemorate the Hamburg Massacre with uh, with a, a more a balanced account, let's say, of what happened. And this was sent to me out of the blue by, uh, it, this is very nice if you'll just pardon me for saying, you know, th through this resurrection of Hamburg, th the resurrection of Hamburg has been a long time coming. The fact that discussion is taking place in Aiken and Edgefield, South Carolina, is remarkable. The spark inspiring this can be traced to your book on Reconstruction. So. Little by little by little, a different view of Reconstruction is, well, you know, I have to say, it's not, believe me, I didn't do anything about it, but it's, uh, I do feel that the little progresses can be made. But, um, so anyway, my point is simply that um, the, the Reconstruction is a, more than most historical subjects, Reconstruction shows you that history actually matters. What people think about history matters. It affects what they do in the present. So it affects how they think about the society in the present. So as we go into the Reconstruction period, just bear that in mind, how historical thinking has changed, where it ought to go from here, and whatever our interpretation, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that something very important for our society was happening uh, during the Reconstruction period. So next time we will start looking at the immediate aftermath of emancipation in the South.